Good night. <laughs> LA came out. This is great. Um, you guys feel like home now, you know? Home is a uh, hometown's Montreal, but now every time I go to LA or I walk around LA, I see things and it just reminds me of home, you know? Ha! <laughs> La Dodgers. <laughs> Oh my God, La Times. <laughs> and this one, oh yeah, La Clinique, the severe gonorrhea. <laughs> uh, my name is Dan. My middle brother's name is Don. Eldest brother's name is Din. Din Dan Don. <laughs> Din Dan Don. Our parents named us after the NBC chimes. <laughs> And if you don't have NBC, it's like my peacock. <laughs> now, his real name is Ernesto Jr., okay? Din is a joke. So you got Ernesto Jr., Don, and Dan, which I think my dad was pretty smart with it because I think he didn't want us to be one of those weird Filipino families where all the kids have the same first letters of their names, you know? Oh, do you want to meet my family? Okay, uh, this is uh, Joop Joop Jr., <laughs> Jason, Jennifer, J E, J R, J Q, J Song, <laughs> Jokoi, Jenny, Jackyo, Jollibee, Jollibee Jr., and Jose. He's half. <laughs> Jose's half. <laughs> I think that's how my dad, uh, you know, picked our names. You know. Oh, you're the first one. You're gonna be Junior. <laughs> You're the first sperm that made it out. <laughs> then my s second one came out. What the? You, you look like a serious baby. <laughs> Boss baby. You look like a baby from the mafia. <laughs> I'm going to call you Dawn. <laughs> the Dawn. Yeah. I know it's a little bit early. It's Dawn. <laughs> you don't like that joke? You hate puns? Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came out, my dad's like, are you sure this is ours? <laughs> You're so wiggly. Well, we can't, well, we can't name him Ernesto Jr. <laughs> we can't name him Dawn. I caught him. <laughs> <laughs> we can't name him Dawn, even though Dawn is such a good name. Dawn, D-O-N, D. Line A and Dan, that's my name, Dan. <laughs> Too much cleavage now. <laughs> um, yeah, my dad was smart. <clears throat> He's like, Dan, you don't need school. Just watch Jeopardy with me for, for the next 30 years of your life. <laughs> and we just sit there, you know, and every single day my dad would say, what is the Philippines? What is the Philippines? What is the Philippines? <laughs> Dan, why am I always gonna get it wrong? Yeah, because right now the category is 17th century Russian classical composers. <laughs> I don't know why the Philippines. You'll get it right one day, Pops. And then the next day he finally gets it right. It's like, see, Dan, look, what is the Philippines? I got it right. I'm a genius. Yeah, because the category is Asian countries that rhymes with Philippines. <laughs> get weird out. I was a funny kid. I grew up in Montreal, so my parents would like take us to the Just for Laughs Festival. They would have these outdoor shows, and I'd just take it all in, you know, in school. Like, my mom would pack me like all these lunches, right, with fruits inside, but I would just like, you know, tie it up and just throw it on the roof. You ever do that? <laughs> oh, fuck you, Apple! <laughs> Every single day, Apple, Apple, Apple! And at the end of the school year, the janitor would be like, hey, who wants look at all these balls in the roof. And he's like, throwing the tennis balls, you know, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hey, what about the bags? He's like, what? <laughs> he's like, 200 bags filled with shit. I'm like, those are mine. And he's like, what? <laughs> it's disgusting, dude. <laughs> I was obsessed with comedy. I just wanted to laugh, you know? There weren't any Filipinos on television, too, right? Like, the only family that I could identify with were the Tanners from Full House. I see them, look, look at they got, they got three girls, we got three boys. They have a bunch of uncles living in their house, so, so did we, right? I'm like, why is Uncle George wearing my socks? You're stretching them out, dude. I wanted to be like a Tanner in every single way, shape, and form, okay? Except for the fact that they wore their freaking shoes in their house. 
<laughs> That's San Francisco. You're going to bring your info? <laughs> Yo, Stephanie Tanner would wake up and she's like, hey, look, I got it. I'm like, I want to do that. But he couldn't. You're Filipinos, you got to leave your shoes outside. <laughs> but one day I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna wear my shoes inside of the house. I'm gonna be a tanner. I'm gonna be white. <laughs> so one Saturday night, I put on my shoes, right? I Velcro it up, make an X, because that's what you do when you have Velcro shoes. <laughs> and now I'm in the top, top of my bunk bed trying to sleep with shoes. You ever step with shoes on? You're just like, my brother's at the bottom. He's like, what the fuck's Dan doing there? I'm like, you can't sleep, it's okay. It's okay, it's just like full house. It's just like full house. And then Sunday morning, I wake up before going to church. I'm like, oh, got my shoes on. Oh! And I'm doing this everywhere in the room, you know. I'm walking to the kitchen like this. I see Don and Ernie eating their Filipino breakfast, you know. Chicken, rice, eggs, spam, corned beef, bacon, fried rice, garlic rice. What, you guys eat, like, cold cereal and milk? Ugh! <laughs> so I'm there, you know. <laughs> yeah, literally, just like... Just like Don's like, what are you doing? What are you wearing your shoes? Ernie's like, yeah, man, you're getting in trouble. I'm like, dad, don't worry about it. All of a sudden, I hear flip-flops, right? My mom's walking towards us. What, are, what is that? She's following the trail. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Din. I mean, Ernie. <laughs> Don, why are you wearing your shoes? And I stood up tall because I was like three foot four, you know? <laughs> because I want to be a tanner. <laughs> right, Don? Where's Don? Ernie? They already left. Okay. <laughs> and at that moment in my life, I didn't know what the meaning of woke was, right? <laughs> so I sat back down, back to my chicken and rice, and then my mom just looks at me, and she goes, Don, you can't be a tanner if you're already tanner than the tanners. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, mm -hmm, so? And then she just goes, like, you're not I start crying into my chicken and rice, which then turned into a lovely Filipino porridge called Lugao. <laughs> Sponsored by Lugao. Can we have that screen? No, it's not coming down. Okay. <laughs> Stupid. So, uh, yeah, I uh, realized that uh, film was a thing. I, I tried applying to this college in Montreal, but they didn't want to accept me, so I moved to Toronto to pursue this thing, you know, Hollywood North up there. And... Uh, I got into this program and it was scary. Not because I was gonna leave my family for the first time, but because I moved from Montreal to Toronto by taking the bus. Oh. <laughs> now, I don't know if you've ever taken the bus up in Canada. Sure, it's safe, but not, not how I remember it. Okay, so back in like 2007, okay, there was this dude riding the bus, right? He's just like this, you know? And he falls asleep. And then, like, in the middle of the night, some dude came in behind him with a knife, and he's... I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna say it. No. I'm just gonna pantomime it, all right? So... <laughs> the guy's like... Right? <laughs> The guy died. The bus company lost a lot of money, you know? If they hired me to be their PR guy, I could like help them, you know? I'm a smart guy, I watch Jeopardy, right? I'm like, dudes, just, you know, this is what you gotta do. You gotta get a new logo, okay? Just fix your logo. And then go on IG, get a new whole entire IG thing, you know? You get a new slogan, this is your slogan, Greyhound. Where will you be headed? <laughs> a couple months later, you know, I take the bus. And then they kind of, you know, they fixed themselves up, right? They, they added security cameras, they added a seatbelt, and then they added a sign above my head that made me feel very safe and secure. The sign read... In case of emergency, dial 1-800-644-5197. Extension! <laughs> Extension! <laughs> One, two, eight, or dial 911. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yo, if some dude's head is falling, I'm the. Yo, hold. One eight zero zero. <laughs> what is the extension for emergency? Hey, dude. Have... <laughs> hey, sir. I'm gonna pull this ear. Hey, sir. Do you know the number for emergency? No, you can't. You're dead. Okay. <laughs> That's a carry on. <laughs> To carry on. <laughs> and then we're on the bus and his head is, feels like a soccer ball. Get the fucking head away from me. <laughs> Too much? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that out. All right. No. So I moved to Toronto by taking the bus and I'm so happy because my Uncle George, who used to crash in my place, now I'm living in his place and I live in his kitchen. But yo, living in a kitchen in Canada is amazing, okay? Summertime's hot, open the fridge. <laughs> Cold, wintertime, turn on the oven, 450 for five hours and then tone it down to 240 for another 18 hours. <laughs> and if you gotta, and for the sink, yo, I do number one and number two and number four, so. <laughs> Fuck's number four. I go to Ryerson University. Don't look at it now. Because it changed the name because the dude was a killer. Okay. So um, I go to the school. It's in, it's in Toronto. You know, I'm part of the film program. And I see this little sketch comedy troupe thing. I take part in it. Great. I join Second City, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the year, we do this showcase. And an agent comes up to me. And she goes, hey, I think there's something for you. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, this is how, this is how Hollywood happens. I'm like, oh, my god. The first audition I ever gotten, okay? She calls me, Dan, we got something for you. I'm like, what? It's for uh, the role of a Filipino karaoke singer. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Filipino karaoke singer is my job. All right, so she sends me the sides. It was for an ABC untitled movie of the week, okay? And all he did was just send me the lyrics to Wump, there it is. I'm like, okay. I give the lyrics to my Uncle George. He's wearing my socks. You know, I'm like, Uncle George, can you? He's like, yeah. Womp, there it is. Doc, Dean, Bach again. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Character study, you know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, eat more pork rinds. Let me see, well, you know, move and shit. This was like 2005, so I print out my black and white headshot. Yo, with the edges on the side. The fucking headshot was so heavy because of the ink. My cousin Marvin's like, yo, you owe us $60. I'm like, I know. So won't there it is in my head. I look like my Uncle George. I'm ready. I go to the casting room. I'm sitting down. And then I see this tall Filipino guy. Tall. <laughs> and he comes in wearing a sweater. And I can see a six-pack through. I'm like, no karaoke guy needs a six. Sits besides me. And he's like, uh, so you're here for the uh, Filipino karaoke singer role? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what about you? What, what, what do you do? It's like, oh, I'm an actor up in New York. They flew me in from the neighborhood playhouse at a UCB. I'm in a couple of, you know, off-Broadway plays and all. I'm like, what about you? I'm like, I tell jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, okay. And I'm like, fuck, I'm screwed. They call my name. I'm like, hmm. I go in. I see three people, all right? Two dudes in the middle, one white lady in the middle. They're like, Dan. I'm like, mm-hmm, go to your mark. It was like 20 feet away, right? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm already short. Now I'm like three foot four, right? So I'm like way back. I'm like, this is, okay. She... And I could hear them looking at my headshot because of the wind of the heavy ink. <laughs> <laughs> heavy resume, light, light shit. I'm like, okay, whatever. Then the middle lady goes, are you Korean? <laughs> Are you Korean? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm Filipino, you heard me from Filipino. I'm like, I'm Korean. So I just yell out, no, I'm not Korean, I'm Filipino. <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> like, no, not, not Korean. Uh, I said, Are you green? <laughs> Are you green? I'm like, no, I'm brown. 
She's like, no, no, no. Is this your first time auditioning? Is this? I'm like, yes. So he's like, so that means you're green. I'm like, so what? Did, okay. <laughs> okay, so say your name and your height, and then just start. Okay. I'm like, Don Ramos, 5'3". Like, what are you doing? I'm like, this is a magic mic. <laughs> <laughs> and then in my head, I'm like, Womp, there it is. Womp, there it is. <laughs> Doc Dean Buck again. Checking the wreck and let's begin. The two dudes are dying of laughter. They're like, ah! Oh! And I keep on going, right? Because I'm like feeling it in my head. I'm like, oh my God, I'm an actor. I'm an actor. I'm an actor! And then a white lady stands up. She's like, stop it, stop it. I'm like, what? Why? She's like, that's too funny. I'm like, no, it's not. It's, uh... She's like, that's too funny. I'm like, but this is my thing. She's like, this movie's about 9-11. <laughs> I'm like, 9-11? Well, I'm like, what do you want? She's like, do it again. And now I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? I... And this is where I pause time. Okay, we could do that. We could pause time. The day before I got the, or like I head to the audition, my agent calls me. She's like, Dan, I don't trust you. I'm like, right. <laughs> so I go to this guy. His name is Ron Leach. He's like an acting coach. I go to this guy. <laughs> and I'm sitting knee to knee to him. You ever sat knee to knee? Some dude's knee to knee, and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking reading the, the lyrics to Womp, There It Is. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm paying $150 an hour. And he's like this. <laughs> and I'm there, I'm like this. We're touching knee to knee. I've never had my knee. And he's <laughs> like this fucked up. And he just goes, Dan, what is Womp? What is womp? <laughs> womp, womp is, uh... <laughs> Six sex. Bingo. <laughs> okay. And he's like, where is it? I'm like, huh? Where is womp? Where's womp? Where's womp? Womp is... Womp's there. There it is. Double bingo. I'm like, and he gets up from our knee to knee. Ah, so now his dick is in my face. I'm like, what the fuck? And he goes, when you say womp, you got to use your solar plexus. And I'm like, what's that? He's like, this. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, thinking, oh my God, this guy's a fucking Right? So now we go back to the fucking ABC audition, right? And they're like, Dan, you ready? I'm like, yes. Action. Whoop. There it is. Whoop. There it is. Within three seconds, she goes, okay, that's enough. I'm like, okay, thank you. I walk out. I'm like, whoop, there goes my career. <laughs> I go back home. And I'm like, man, what the fuck was that? Ring, 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 ring. Dan. I'm like, what? It's your agent. I'm like, I know. <laughs> They're torn. I'm like, torn? They're like, yeah, they want you or this other dude with the six pack through the. So I'm like, what? It's me or him for the. Uh. And in my head, I'm like, yo, I don't need to compete. I'm already happy. This is it. This is all my jam. She's like, I'll call you back. Two seconds later, she calls me back. She's like, you booked it. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. It got me union. It was an ABC movie of the week. We're in the middle of Toronto during the winter time. At 2 a.m., I'm belting out, whoa! And there's like 300 people going like, they hired this fucker, right? Nine months later on what? ABC. 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> on 9-11. ABC, get the fuck out of here! We're gonna have to redo that, can we cut that? <laughs> nine, nine. Eight, eight, eight. I love that. Whoever, I'll give you $3 back because you made my night. So now on 9-11, right? I have over 100 Filipinos supporting me. Like, yo, for a dude to get an American credit in Canada in 2005, I wasn't even done with school yet. I didn't even know if I could become an actor. So I'm watching it. My mom's like, Don, this is amazing. I'm like, yeah, I know. We all watch.
Okay, so three hours later, everyone's like, where are you? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, the movie is six hours. She's like, six? <laughs> Around the fifth hour, Manila. Oh, yeah, Dad, you're here. Okay, so now this is the scene, right? Exterior Manila and Philippines night. People are walking downtown, you know, they're having a good time. Karaoke bar there, playing Wump, there it is. You know, I don't really see me. A couple of people are walking. All of a sudden, <laughs> explosions. People are taking out their guns and running away. And it comes back to me going, whoop, there it is. Whoop, there And people are dying. And everyone's laughing now at home. Ah, my mom's like, God, I thought this was a serious movie. Why, why is everyone laughing? I'm like, I don't know, but I think I'm doing something right. <laughs> and in my heart, I'm like, how do I do all of this, but in the States, right? So I was a hopeful Canadian, you know, I, I graduated from the program, now I'm a full-time barista. <laughs> My mom's like, Dan, your aunt wants you to host her wedding. I'm like, again? <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll use the same jokes. So I go back from Toronto to Montreal, I'm bombing in front of 300 Filipinos, which is great. <laughs> I see my family sharing a table with a lovely Jewish family, you know, and it was so funny. Like, they had three little boys, were three boys. My dad was drinking with their dad. My mom was judging their mom. It was great. And for some reason, I made the, the guy laugh so hard. And he invited us. He's like, Ramos says, we want you guys to come down to the Hamptons. And we're like, why? He gives us this card. We go back home. My dad's like, done. Does he want to kidnap you? I'm like, I don't know. But we'll figure it out. We go online. We search his thing. He was an executive producer at Din Dun Dun. <laughs> and my dad's like, he could probably get you a visa to move down. And I'm like, yeah. And my dad's like, we have to give him something that he's never had before. So I'm like, yeah, but look at his net worth. He's like a millionaire. He's like, I'll figure it out. I'm like, all right. All right, pops. The next day, he comes back with like $175 worth of smoked meat from Schwartz's Deli, this big piece. I'm like, what the fuck? We're gonna give this to the Jews. I'm like, you're gonna give this meat to like a present? Is it? Yes! I'm like, how? He's like, I'll figure it out. I'm like, okay, okay. So we go from Montreal uh, to the border, right, of the US, and you know, it's like 2 a.m. My brother Don's driving, I'm riding shotgun. My mom's in the back praying to rosary. I'm about to wind it up and up and up. His mom be about to. And my dad, Ernesto Sr. We head to the border. He's like, hi, passports. We give him the passports. He's like, How long are you guys staying here for? Oh, we're here, I guess for the weekend. Yeah. You guys bringing in anything? My brother's like, no. <laughs> I go, no. My mom's bringing, no. And Ernesto Sr., we have no meat in the back. <laughs> this is Don. He's like, wait, what did your father say? I'm like, he didn't say anything. He's senile. He said, I said we have no meat in the back of our trunk. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> the guy's like, I'm going to have to go to the back. Pop open the trunk. He goes over to the back of the trunk. It's a 20-foot caravan, so it's long, you know. Call back! He opens it up. I was like, what, what, what is this? It's all slimy and shit. He's like, I'm going to throw this away. I'm like, yo, if you're about to throw away really good food, my Filipino mom's going to wake up from her prayers from the matrix like this. <gasps> Sir, please don't throw it away. That meat is a present for the Jews. He's like, what? You're gonna eat? Like, and he just throws it in the trash. My dad's about to hit him. I'm like, don't, don't. Hit the cop, pops. Now the guy searches the van a little bit more and then he just lets us go, right? Now we're driving to the Hamptons, meatless. <laughs> so we're gonna go to this dude's home, we have nothing. 10 minutes, we're just quiet, Ernesto Sr. I'm like, what the, I just turned to my, like, Pa, why did you say something? You should have just shut your mouth. And he never hits me, right? But this time, adios mio. He gets up, you know, because he's like three foot four, right? In the tall caravan, and he runs toward me. He's like, what did you say? 
turns around, and then he's like, mm. and he opens up the sweater. I'm like, what is that? This is the smoked meat. I'm like, what? What was in the back? What is a decoy meat? I'm like, decoy meat? <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a chicken, uh, you know, the breakfast from like years ago. It's the, yeah. So now we're like, oh my God, we're dying. I'm like making out the meat, uh, you know? I put the meat on my brother's dick as he's driving. <laughs> we go to the ham. Have you guys ever been to the Hamptons? Yeah. <laughs> the gates open, right? 26 seconds from the gate to the home. Where we're like. <laughs> and we see this scrawny Jewish guy. He could already, my dad's already. This is for you. And he's like, is that me? Is that from Schwartz's Deli? My dad goes, mm-hmm. The guy starts crying kosher tears on it. Oh my God. He loves it. We love it. He's like, come on in. We go into this big house. My dad's like, wow, this is like a full house. It's like very full. It's like a full house. And he's like, check out the pool. We go to the pool, you know, and there's a guest house. Oh, wow, it's like a full house. It's full, full house. Okay, you don't like the pun. Okay. <laughs> so now he's carving the meat. He's eating it. And my dad and I are swimming in the pool. And I'm like, Dad, are you ever gonna tell him that you sat on that for like eight hours? <laughs> what is no? <laughs> what is no? <laughs> so I end up getting a visa. I uh, moved to LA, and um, this is the craziest part. So back in 2017, I get news that I get uh, to do Just for Laughs. They're like, Dan, we're giving you an hour, you got three sold out shows, do whatever you want. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing, okay? Leaving from Montreal to go to LA and now to come back and whatever, it's a dream come true. A month later, my brother calls me and he goes, Dan, you have to come back now. I'm like, why? Pa's dying. I'm like, what? He's like, just come home now. So within like 24 hours, I tell my girlfriend goodbye. She's like, when are you coming back? I'm like, I don't know. I pack all my shit, I give her all my money just to pay for the rent. I don't know. The next thing I know, I'm in the hospice looking at my dad dying. He's not moving, he's not talking, he's just staring at me. And all the while, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, and you have to deal with your Just for Laughs show. Like, how does this even. So after a week of just going back and forth, you know, I'm, like, I'm getting tired of it. I'm back in my childhood room, you know. And then my mom, she knocks on the door, Dan, you have a package. I'm like, okay. I grab the package, I go back to my room, and it's from my friend Megan. It's like, Dan, I'm sorry about your dad, and I know that you left Carla. Um, like this, I hope this helps, all right? I'm like, thank you. I open up, it's a nice little card, and then I open the next package, and it's like a flashlight. <laughs> now I'm like, what? And my mom turned my childhood room into a little Catholic altar, so it was like Jesus' eyes just following me, crosses everywhere, and I'm holding this big fucking, and I'm like, I can't, I can't be fucked. Like, I hide the freaking flashlight underneath my bed for a week, and I'm like, it's like the princess and the pea. Every time I'm in it, I feel it. I'm like, I can't be horny and thinking about the show, and then my dad dying. And I'm like, no, no, horny, horny waits. <laughs> a week later, my mom's like, done. It's not looking good. There's less than a week. And my first thought was, I'm gonna fuck it. <laughs> I told my brother, Don, I'm gonna go to my room to, I didn't even joke, it's like, I'm gonna fuck the flesh. I'm like, yeah, do what you gotta do. So I go to the, I go to the room, right? And then now I'm like flipping over all the Jesus pictures, all the teas. I'm like, no, right? And you guys ever like, Seen one of those? It's kind of crazy. You open it up, and you got the, you know, and then they give you little oil packets that looks like little ramen thing. Like, oh, I know this. You <laughs> right, put it on up. And then you know when you're ready, you right? So, so for an entire day in my room, Don's like, hello, I'm like, I'm rehearsing. 
but after 24 hours, I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm a good boy. You got to refocus. So you know what I did? I take the flashlight and I cut it into 12 pieces. And then I take individual bags and I put them, you know, tie them up. And then I go around the city of Montreal just chucking it at homeless people. <laughs> hey, Squissa, hey, what's this? And some of them will open it up and they know how to fuck it, right? Because they get a little hockey puck. But some of them are gonna chew it. Some of them are gonna chew it. <clears throat> and they're like, hey, what is this? I'm like, what is smoked meat? <laughs> My name's Dan Ramos, thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, I've never even heard of this motherfucking guy named Jean-Luc. Okay, uh, I hope, are you ready? Yes. I mean, so just, is that the same person that did ABC? <laughs> All right, guys, enjoy the show. Thank you, I love you guys. We come to this place for magic. We come to AR. There is to laugh, to cry, to care. Because we need that, all of us. That indescribable feeling we get when the lights begin to dim. And we go somewhere we've never been before. Not just entertained, but somehow reborn together sound that I can feel. Somehow, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. Our heroes feel like the best part of us, and stories feel perfect and powerful. Because here, they are theaters. We make theaters better. I saw a 
monkey or a sandwich with a top hat. And I saw a sign that said C I R C U S. Kirkuzi. <laughs> Circus. <laughs> then I told myself, oh my gosh, y'all, maybe this is your place. You need to be here. And then I was there for the next 48 years of my life. <laughs>
Guys, guess who's here? Who? Uh, Alfredo! <laughs> <laughs> Alfredo! Do you guys want to see what Alfredo could do? Yeah. yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah! Because this is what? Alfredo. Alfredo. I was going to think, I was thinking funny of one, but one that I confused. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is uh, my condom and my penis pump. <laughs> <laughs> you got that? Okay. You know what, uh, when you're funny, sometimes you have to do impressions, right? Thank you. And this is my impression of a Broadway actor trying to finish his monologue, but he can't because he needs to fuck. Hi, my name is Dan. I'm here uh, to audition for the role of Jim in the Tennessee Williams play, The Glass Menagerie. <laughs> know what I judge to be the trouble with you? Inferiority complex, you know what that is? That's what they call it when someone low rates themselves and understand this because I had it too. Although my case was not so aggravated. Aggravated as yours seems to be. I had it until I took a public speaking and developed my voice and realized that I had an aptitude for sciences, but. But. <laughs> Hmm. But before that time, I never thought of myself as being outstanding in any way whatsoever. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is my impression of a hipster laughing inside of a really famous comedy club. I went on uh, X, I was gonna say Twitter. I went on X and I asked one of the Jabberwockies to come. Um, 
and uh, and asked if they could dance for me, but they said no. <laughs> so I asked them if they could like look at my audition tape, but they so this is my impression of Fat Jabberwocky. I honestly want to do him sit magic, okay? This is a little serious magic, okay? I have a deck, a dick of cards. <laughs> I have a dick of cards. <laughs> and I need someone to just, uh, uh, Madame with the beanie, can I have you on, come on stage, please, Madame? <laughs> Let's give it up for, uh, yeah, come on stage. What's your name? Um, Lauren. Lauren, give it up for Lauren. <laughs> Stop. Hammer time, Aki. <laughs> Close up, Aki. I want you to pick a card, any card, please. And show the audience your card. Aki. And we've never met. Never. <laughs> I've never subscribed to your OnlyFans, right? Aki, that's another Jean-Luc 69. Aki! I want you. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Well, uh, I want you to put the car, uh, a card on top, please. Okay, it's on top. And I want you to cut the deck in half and put the other deck on top. Okay. Yeah, see, look, we can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now look at this to pretend I'm doing some bush. <laughs> Her card is going to be flipped over. Do you believe that? No. <laughs> Me neither, but let's find out. Okay, so we're gonna. No. <laughs> John Lucas Gates, is this your car? No. The Four of Diamonds. We're still doing Funny 101, and when you're doing Funny 101, you also gotta uh, say musical improv because it's the thing to do, right? Can somebody just uh, say something they ate uh, this morning? Curry. Huh? <laughs> what? Sausage. Wait, huh? Oatmeal. Oatmeal curry.
great segue to my last gig. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta have a closed bit, huh? You gotta have a mother closing bit. <laughs> so I'll show you my closing bit, and then um, I hope you guys could, um, you know, learn a thing or two hundred on uh, how to be a uh, funny. Because we're at the comedy st uh, yard theater. <laughs> Jean-Luc and Dan uh, Hanko rented the spot and we're trying to get a good shot of all this. <laughs> So um, I was uh, I did the Gong Show. I auditioned for Jean Luc. Okay, this is Dan. So I auditioned for Jean. <laughs> this is Dan. <laughs> so I said ABC my tape of Jean Luc. They love it. They're like you're hired. I'm like, so I'm doing this the whole bit. They're like, yeah, you got a minute. Amazing. I go there. They're like, yeah, you're gonna be a leprechaun now. I'm like. Hmm. <laughs> They fucking put me all in green. I look like Blanca from Street Fighter 2. 
And I'm like, this is not John Luke. This is not John Luke. And they're like, yeah, well, you play old Danny Boy. So that's an Irish song. I'm like, all right. So as soon as like the curtains went up, like Mike Myers was the host. And he was all in like fat outfit, right? And the day before that, I had a meeting with his manager. So before the thing went on, I'm in fat blank. I'm like, yo, dude, I had a meeting with, with Pam. He's like, huh? He's like, yeah, your manager. And then he just went up. Anyway, <laughs> I did the bit. Yo, they didn't gong me. They loved it. I played the whole song. They gave me a six. I flipped over my head. And I'm like, that's a nine. And they laughed more. I think they got rid of me because I was too quick. <laughs> I came back to jean All right. Thing, then you know you get it. <laughs> <laughs> 